Hello everyone, we wait five minutes more because there's people joining. Thank you for your patience. So a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anna Maria Di Giorgio and I'm the director of the Italian Cultural Institute of San Francisco. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Welcome. Benvenute, benvenuti to this Zoom webinar, History of Mosaic Art in Friuli, that I had the pleasure to organize together with many institutions that I'd like to thank. Thanks to Museo Italo Americano and in particular Bianca Friundi here with us today. Ciao Bianca. Anna Maria. Thanks to Associazione Naoni and curator Guglielmo Zanette. Thanks to Lido Cantarutti and Marine Italian Film Festival. And thanks to Marine Mocha Museum, in particular to its director, Amy Owen, that hosts an amazing Friuli mosaic exhibition called Italo American Portraits that you might visit until November the 7th. So we will put in the chat box all the info, the plan, etc. later on. Uh, I'd also like to remind that already in 2019, we celebrated the, uh, an exhibition pop icons uh, with the first show with Friuli Mosaics at the Marine Mocha called Faces 50. And that experience has led us to present exhibition, Italian American icons uh, with amazing works realized by young students from La Scuola dei Musicisti del Friuli di Spirinbergo. So last but not least, let me thank artist Denise Toson, that uh, later on will introduce us to the secrets of how a mosaic is built. And Denise has faced the travel ban and a quarantine to be here with us today. So thank <laughs> you very much, Denise. Uh, this is an important occasion to share with the American public an excellency in the Italian arts, uh, namely mosaics, uh, but also to promote a gem such as Regione Friuli Venezia Giulia. I'd like to quote one for all the jewel of the crown, Aquileia, that's a city that in 1998 was declared UNESCO cultural heritage, thanks to its mosaic traditions. And Aquileia is named, as a matter of fact, Città del Mosaico, city of mosaics. So coming to our webinar and today's guests, Guglielmo Zanette, uh, film director, architect and designer, graduated from the Politecnico in Milan. And during his long career, he has collaborated with both the private and public sector to promote new forms and expressions in contemporary mosaic art. Italian American icons is the latest of his successful features. And it has been realized after two frantic, intense and extremely creative years of cooperation with young artists from different countries, Italy, France, Venezuela, Russia, Kazakhstan. Denis Toson graduated from the Scuola Mosaicisti del Friul in Spilimbergo and is an, an artist in residence of Marine Mocha. And her work is featured in uh, the exhibition Italian American Icons. So before starting, if you have any questions, please write them in the Q&A box here below in Italian or in English. And we will post these questions during the workshop if possible or at the end. 
And now, with no further ado, I'm glad to leave the floor to my dear friend Bianca Friundi from the Italo American Museum. Grazie, Anna Maria. Ciao. Um, e buonasera a tutti. Um, on behalf of the Museo Italo Americano, I would like to thank, of course, Anna Maria and the Italian Cultural Institute for the opportunity of co presenting this great webinar on the history of mosaic art in Friuli. And we're honored to be part of this event. Um, thank you for inviting us. We are honored um, to be part of this special community. So, Anna Maria, allow me to thank this community too. Um, Guglielmo Zanette, uh, Denise Tozon, uh, Italian Film Festival founder Lido Cantaruti, who is a real Friulano and a great supporter of the um, Scuola Mosaicisti del Friuli. And of course, the Marine uh, Mocha um, for bringing such an exquisite exhibition to the galleries and featuring Italian heritage, uh, an Italian American heritage through an array of works of art developed through an ancient medium such as the, um, the mosaic. The, the title and the content of the show and the event definitely uh, resonate with the Museo and, and our mission, which is to preserve um, the heritage of Italian Americans for future generations through art, of course, through language and uh, through culture. And the timing is also perfect because we are about to celebrate the Italian Heritage Month by recognizing our culture, our traditions, and the many outstanding contributions made by Italians and Italian Americans to California and in general to the United States. And speaking of outstanding uh, contributions, we cannot leave out A.P. Giannini, um, innovator, um, visionary, and the founder of the Bank of Italy, who is also featured in the show, Italian American Icons uh, at the Marine Mocha, which I invite you to go visit, an outstanding uh, show. And um, you will find an exquisite mosaic of A.P. Giannini, beautifully uh, crafted by, by Denise Dozon. Um, so again, thank you for this opportunity um, of being part of uh, this, uh, this experience, the show, the event, um, and look, um, this beautiful, uh, beautiful mosaic of one of the symbols of um, Italian American heritage. So really my uh, compliments to Guglielmo, Denise and your, you know, the whole school. Um, really kudos to all of you. Thank you again for the opportunity. Grazie Anna Maria and enjoy the presentation. Grazie. Thank you, Bianca. So now I leave the floor to Guglielmo Zanette, curator of the exhibition at Marine Mocha. Yes, thank you. I would like to, to do a brief introduction about uh, the history of mosaic, especially about Aquileia. <coughs> Talking about <coughs> Luli Venezia Giulia without mentioning its mosaic, it's impossible. The history of this region is closely connected to this art born, develop, developed and uh, refined over the centuries. It all started in Aquileia, an important Roman and Paleo-Christian mosaic site, which in ancient times was the fourth biggest city of the Roman Empire and still preserves today some splendid mosaics of the Paleo-Christian and Christian age kept in the ancient basilica which has become UNESCO World Heritage Site. <clears throat> Our contemporary mosaic basilica has a corpus which was rebuilt after the destruction by Attila. The mosaics on the floor of the basilica are very important. They include the largest known Paleo-Christian polychrome mosaic floor in Western Europe, approximately 760 square meters. The south room of Basilica has incredible mosaic that describes the cycle of Jonah, one of the biblical prophets, and develops the aspect of penitence. The floor of the oldest section shows designs and figures that at the first sight seem 
mysterious and strange, as you can see some images. <clears throat> there is also, maybe later you will see a lobster on the tree. Very weird. What does it mean? <clears throat> Only recently, scholars have discovered uh, that these are the exact translation, this mosaic, the exact translation in pictures of a religious Gnostic type philosophy and correspond to a similar text which have come to light by chance in Egypt. There is no knowledge of the artists who created these mosaics, nor of the Gnostic group that commissioned the work. Divided in three sections, so now you see the Ariete in the, in the octagon. Um, divided in three sections, the decorated room speaks of kerasmos. It's Greek, it means the mixed zone. The material reality is represented by five concentric spheres guarded by five guardians called archonti, who have astrological meanings as well as links to the symbolic representation of classic mythology and ancient cosmogony. The next zone is called stereoma or superior world of fixed stars. This is the heaven where only mature people who have abandoned the mixed zone can enter, having freed themselves of the materials being through their spiritual evolution. Of course, with the help of secret knowledge, you always need a secret knowledge to get a great result. The final heaven, the pleroma, is the area of God. Maybe when you would see the tortu and the cock, they represent the eternal battle between God and bad. <clears throat> the last octagon is protected by a severe guardian, the last guardian, Arconte. It is the final goal of the souls who through mystical experience, formulas and esoteric revelation will at least be able to embrace her father. <clears throat> this original interpretation confirmed by many professors that they want to, de to demonstrate how Aquileia is very, very old because you have to remember that the ships from Egypt, they were arriving only in nine days in Aquileia. Aquileia was the center of many things. And for this reason was also the fourth biggest town on, of the Roman Empire. This original interpretation <clears throat> is also the plot of a historical thriller, The Mystery of Aquileia, that our association now on has developed in the recent years. <clears throat> we hope soon it will become a great movie, something like the Da Vinci Code <laughs> about the mosaic of the Basilica. In any case, I would like to invite all participants to come to Friuli and visit this precious treasure in Aquileia. <clears throat> the mosaic tradition in Friuli has continued over the centuries until the creation of the mosaic school in 1922. Next year, the Spilimbergo school will be 100 years old. Congratulations. According to the art critic and historian Vittorio Sgarbi, the Mosaic School competes in terms of prestige with Venice and Ravenna. The merits of his fame go above all to the Mosaic School of Friuli, named Scuola Mosaicisti del Friuli, a prestigious reality renowned internationally for the competence of the craftsmen who train here and export their talent all over the world showing the mosaic art as an expression of contemporaneity and not only as a testimony of a rich past. The tradition using pebbles, glass and shells for the decorative purposes is a tradition that has accompanied men in various stages of history. Just remember how the Romans used mosaics to embellish the patrician domus and the most prestigious place, as well as in Aquileia, founded in 181 BC by the Roman Empire. <clears throat> but there is another characteristic <clears throat> that few people know about. Our Tagliamento River in Friuli 
very close to the mosaic school is so rich in stones that have always been used by our mosaic artists for their composition. Even today, during the three years of studies that the students of the school have to finish, the school trips on the Tagliamento River are dedicated to collect the stones of the river. The students have to collect many stones. It's hard, but then they can create many things with a modern artistic spirit. It's worth it. But let's go back to the history of the mosaic in Friuli that has developed over the centuries. It was from the 16th century that a group of Friulian mosaicists making a stop in that of Venice, heir to the Roman and Byzantine mosaic tradition, study the ancient mosaic and reach in their baggage, ready for the great leap that lead them to give life to important and significant, significant mosaic artworks that are nowadays located in every corner of the world, in airports, stations, hotels, subways, university, public and private residence, stadium, cathedrals, monasteries. You can see some masterpieces like the mosaic cycle of the Foro Italico in Rome, Sant'Irene Monastery in Athens, and Kawaku Hotel in Osaka, Japan. Also in Washington, and in the subway of New York, there is a big installation to commemorate 9-11, donated by the Mosaic School of Spinimbergo. <clears throat> For more information about the school, you can visit the website www.scuolamosaicisti.com. Techniques. There are several working techniques to which the mosaic appeals for the installation. The fastest system is the direct, direct technique that leads to apply the tessera that from the design directly on the surface to be decorated but the artist, Denise Toton, will speak to you better than me during the, the, her demonstration in which she will work on the creation of a small mosaic. Uh, 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 sorry. <clears throat> However, I renew my invitation to visit the mosaic school in Spilimbergo because you will be able to see an authentic museum of artworks hanging on the walls, in the columns, on the floor, it's beautiful, really stunning experience. And you can make also a workshop in that area. Uh, during the summer, they have a workshop of one week, two weeks, three weeks. It doesn't matter how old are you. <laughs> Everybody can participate. Our co association, Naonis, was founded 30 years ago in Pordenone, a little town in Regione Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, is continuing to collaborate with the Mosaic School through the Mosaic Young Talent competition dedicated to the young students who are doing the third and last year of the school. I say <clears throat> our competition because I'm the artistic director of this association, known as, and six years ago, I had the idea to create this competition about mosaic portraits. At the beginning, the students were a little bit hesitant about the idea to make a mosaic portrait instead of an abstract work. But I insisted because I wanted to create an exhibition that uh, people can very easily understand. You know, with this famous, famous, famous uh, faces of personality that you can recognize at the first sight, probably you will be in touch, or you, will, you will feel immediately some emotion for these artworks, and then after that, you will discover that it's mosaic. How, how is this mosaic? They go, oh, they go very close to the mosaic portrait and they start to, to check how meticulous, how difficult, and uh, how precise is this work. And also, I offer the opportunity to the students to use different elements and materials compared to the past not only marbles, not only beautiful animals that we call Venetian smalti, because they are <coughs> still produced in, in Venice and in Murano. We have 5,000 range, uh, a range of 5,000 colors with this beautiful and brilliant smalti. 
And I said to the guys, you have to use also plastic, metal, decorative insert, whatever you want, whatever you think is necessary or useful to, to make a better portrait. So they started to create a new kind of mosaic portrait, very original and innovative in the contemporary art scene. People love this contamination between ancient past and modernity. Generally, a student has to invest at least two, three months to complete one good mosaic portrait. After six years of competition, our association now is, is proud to present two different collections of mosaic portrait. <laughs> the, first, the first one is 50 faces. As Anna Maria said, we present already this collection two years ago. It was a successful event, full of people, very beautiful. And then unfortunately, <laughs> COVID stopped us and stopped Lido also <laughs> with the festival, stopped everybody. And now we are back. Even uh, with this travel ban, we don't mind, we are here. And so the 50 Paces collection, the old one is uh, actually in Fullerton, Orange County, at the McEntaller Cultural Center, a beautiful museum villa uh, from the 19th century. But the other collection named Italian American Icons is a new one. We have created this in the last two years. The mosaic portraits are larger. They have more background. So I think the excellence of this uh, collection is even, even more now, even more um, detailed and, and uh, they have a, a big, uh, big value in my opinion, not only because they are larger, but we contacted the best students from the first four years. We said, you, you know, you did already two, three mosaic. And so it's better if you experiment yourself with this uh, size. <laughs> we can count on artists like Deborah Franco, who was here two years ago, and Denise Dozon, she's here, and many others. <laughs> so, I really want to invite you to go to Marin Mocha Museum to visit this stunning exhibition. And uh, you will see some incredible icons uh, from cinema, from movie stars like Al Pacino, John Travolta, Sylvester Stallone, Leonardo DiCaprio, created by Denise Ozon. She will talk about it but also film director, very important, film director that we love so much, like Sergio Leone, Once Upon a Time in America, or Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese is the father of our actors, Italo-American Italo actors. Incredible singers, like Frank Sinatra, Lady Gaga, Madonna. They are all Italian-American. <coughs> we did also some special tributes, <coughs> tributes to legendary men like Pavarotti, and also to Peter Giannini. But we spoke already about Peter Giannini and uh, Denise Dozon is one of these excellent artists and I'm very proud to introduce her to all the friends who listen to us because she is too managed to arrive here after a long wait in Croatia before being able to enter in the United States. But she will tell you better about it and she's here, that's the most important thing. Denise brought us a fantastic mosaic portrait of A.P. Giannini, Bianca Friundi told you about earlier. I only saw it on the photo, which is beautiful, but I want to see it live. At this point, I will give the floor to Denise. She's a fantastic artist, very, very talented. In her mosaic portrait, she's always able to capture the real soul of the character. The soul of the portrayed person is the most important and difficult thing to achieve, believe me. So I'm very happy to collaborate with Denise since she won the first prize of the Mosaic Young Talent competition in 2017. So dear Denise, we are looking forward to seeing your mosaic demonstration. The floor <laughs> is yours, please. Thank you very much. Um... Just like uh, 
Anna Maria Stey, I'm, I'm a former student of the Mosaic School of Spielenberg. And uh, I have here, I don't know if you can see it, a little frame. I choose a picture of uh, Kate Haring just to show you how we create a mosaic composition. Um, I have here all the material already kept. Oh, and uh, here behind <laughs> the uh, mosaic we were talking about, Amadeo Giannini. Here. I don't know if you can see it. Beautiful. Al salon pochino. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> I used the glass paste on it and uh, also some marbles. Glass paste is um, the glass we use in mosaic usually. Yeah. It's heavy. Okay. <laughs> we are. And so, um, like I said, I'm going to show you how we create a mosaic uh, surface. Here are the materials. I'm going to work uh, in direct technique. It's a very, it's a very um, easy technique. Uh, when you have the image, you just have to print them out and then cover all with the nylon. In this case, I just put the print on the frame. Here are some glue. We use cement glue. We spread the glue like this. We pick up some of the material. And we just go to put the tesserae in it, like this. There is a question, are these tesserae of glass in this case? Yes, uh, this is glass paste. Oh, thank you so much. It's what we usually use in Italy. Like this. Very easy, like I said. Have you cut these pieces in advance? Uh, yeah. Same, they have to be the same, uh, exact same uh, measure or uh, they have to be different in this case? Uh, in this case, uh, I cut them uh, almost, uh, yeah, almost every, every tessera, every tie have the same dimension. This is a contemporary technique. Of course, the tesser, the tiles can have uh, different uh, um, shapes. Denise, two, two participants have raised their hands. Do you prefer to go on or while you work, I can give the, I, I can let them speak to make you questions. Yeah, of course, I just go on working and you can- So Evelyn, uh, Evelyn, please. If you want to pose a question, you can. Evelyn Gara, Evelina. Yes, I wanted to know uh, 
isso é, isso é da manhã, isso é, da, isso é em que eu na fulana. Where, where do you get the tiles? Are they made in Spilimbergo or? Yeah, um, there are um, two, uh, two shops where you can call them, that, uh, where you can find the tiles in Spilimbergo, but also there are other ones in, uh, in Venice. In Spilimbergo, one of them is called uh, Dona, Mosaici Dona. I can write it down if you want. And the other is uh, uh, Morasutti Mosaici, or Morasutti Smalti. I can write it. I'm writing, I'm writing, don't worry, Denise. Okay. So Melody, Melody Marks has another question for you. Melody, please. Oh, uh, the type of the glue. This is semantic glue, P10. Può scrivere questo perché è difficile capire che tipo di colla è? Questa è una colla cementizia P10, P10. It's cool like this. It's a type of cemented glue. Cement glue. But you can also use the other other glues like a carabon or caraplex. Ah. Okay. Denise Keraflex con la K, vero? Keraflex. Sì, con la K. Ok. There are other questions. We go on while you, while you work. Um, in the beginning, is the glass bigger? Who cuts it and how? Yeah, we... I don't have um, the... The pizzas, we are, well, uh, this kind of materials, I don't know if you can see it. Okay, it's just a piece of it. But um, we use uh, this material that uh, comes in uh, pizzas because uh, there are round uh, pots uh, about uh, 13 centimeters. I have, I already cut some pieces of it, so. I don't have the entire, entire pizza. Thank you, Denise. How do you cut it though? There is a special uh, instrument, right? Oh, yeah, you can use a glass cutter and then, uh, and then I try to move the laptop. Denise, ci sei? Abbiamo dei problemi tecnici. Denise, ci sei? Sorry, for, we, we, are having, we are experimenting some technical issues. Yeah. Excuse me for your patience. I was trying to cut some material. So it's all right now. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you okay. so much. Yeah, I was showing the tools, the Martellina, the Hardy, the log. 
we have everything now we are ready to go and and, and uh, cut this pizza yeah a pizza slice So there's another question, uh, Michael uh, pose. How do you see the exact outline of the art if you cover it with the glue? I don't cover it all, just um, just a bit, and then go on with the tessere, and then so like step by step. You mean? Yeah, no? you are step. covering it step by step, as you might see. Exactly. Here, putting mm -hmm. that's the first. She's putting just the white ones in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, white line uh, below, and then as you may see, uh, Michael, she's covering the black border here, so she's not covering the entire um, profile. Yeah, of course, I have to see what I'm going to do. So just uh, step by step, like you said. How long will it take to dry? How long will the glue take to dry? Uh, this kind of glue, about half a day. So you will you will have to, to leave it rest for half a day before? Yeah. Yeah. I see that you need a lot of patience to do this. <laughs> yeah. Everyone told them that, but it's just, yeah, just passion at the end. And Denise, can you tell us something? Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit about your history? Why you decided to devote your life on basically on mosaics? Uh, why you chose the school of mosaic in Spilimberg? How do you discover this art and your interest for this art? Oh, well, um, I'm from Seklaus. It's a town uh, near Spilimberg, so I so... Uh, <laughs> Mosaics all my life, and it was just natural after the um, Academia of Balearti of Venice to just uh, go to the school, and then I just fell in love with mosaic. And uh, another question from our public. They're asking how long does it take to create a portrait? So we, I, I think they mean uh, uh, a portrait like the ones you, the one you realized for Marin Mocha exhibition. Uh, the portrait of uh, Amelia Giannini just took uh, a month of work. And, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of work, but. Uh, it depends, it means it depends of the, the, difficult, the difficulties. I mean, every, every subject has 
um, a different uh, <laughs> yeah I just want to say that every portrait every subject is different so it's hard to say so other questions are coming a lot of questions already <laughs> So um, on the portrait behind you, so the one of Amedeo Giannini, did you have a photo of the man or did you create the mosaic piece without a photo? Um, I had a photo. I developed uh, this kind of solution. Uh, I just put a different uh, background of the photo I, I found. And that is the result. I don't know if you can, you don't see it here. And um, there is another question. What, yes. if anything, do you listen to while you work so painstakingly? Mentre, mentre lavori così a lungo, cosa ascolti per avere questa poi pazienza e concentrazione? Uh, music and uh, I... Recently, I began to listen a lot of books with Audible. <laughs> Thank you. Can I, can I your favorite music while creating the mosaics, Denise? So, as you have to, to spend oh. a lot of time <laughs> concentrated. Um, I usually listen pop music, um, One Republic. I like them a lot. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So one, may I say one thing about the mosaic portrait about Giannini? Of course, please go ahead. No, because we discussed with, with Denise because uh, at the beginning Lido Cantaruti asked me to create this mosaic portrait about Giannini because he said it's a very important figure for us, etc., etc. So we found these beautiful photos from the brochure of the Museo Itali Italo Americano. And I said to, to Denise that uh, it's, it's important that he seems alive. So it's better to use uh, some colors, not only black and white, you know, because usually when you do a mosaic portrait in black and white, it seems something old, you know? So we discuss about the background. And she had this a great idea to, to create these waves of different colors in blue and green, which was a great idea. And then we discuss about the little details like the tie is green and the, the pochette, I don't know, from the jacket also, you know, just a little touch to, to give some modernity, to give the idea that uh, Peter Giannini is uh, still alive in some way. So I think the result is, is really good in this way. So thank you very much, Denise. Guglielmo, before you mentioned enamels, so uh, which is the difference here between enamel and, and the glass uh, Denise, the, pi the, glass, the pizza glass Denise is using, if, if any? But the pizza, I think it's a, it's a regular Venetian smalti, or did you get it from somewhere else, Denise? No, I, I use the uh, pizzas. Um, it's just glass, but um, much more resistant than uh, the normal glass. So and not transparent, also because there is. It, it can be. It can be, but uh, can be. not in this case. So Denise, just to clear for our public to 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 clarify. So you're using uh, normal glass. In this case, no. I mean, no. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm using pizzas, so uh, glass paste. Okay, and uh, but when you talk about enamel, are you talking about this kind of glass or another kind of glass? Um, I'm not glass, sure. So. I'm not sure about the difference because. Uh, uh, we could, in Italy, don't, we don't call them. Uh, oh, okay. 
So it's a it's an American way of uh, yeah I, I think so. or glass. I see. Okay. Thank you for so much for uh, so that may be useful for our public. And uh, Guglielmo, another thing I wanted to discuss with you and Denise. Uh, when I came to this amazing exhibition in Marine Mocha, I saw many different techniques used, as you mentioned, by the artists there. But I also saw a video that's very interesting on artists basically uh, going through the river and uh, and 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 um, taking rocks from the river and cutting them directly on place. Okay, could you tell us something about this? Uh... This thing about the school in Spilimbergo. So students in the Spilimbergo International School of Mosaics, they used to go to the river, pick up their rocks, choose their rocks, and cut them directly. And if yes, that's why it's also so the mosaics in that area is so developed because there is a huge variety of different shades of rocks. Yes, probably because you have to remember that many years ago, our our region was really poor also so <laughs> when they were going there the, the these materials were free you know free of cost so they start to use them then they integrate with the venetian smalti and regular marbles so probably at the beginning they had to now <clears throat> it's more interesting to bring the students and pick up all these stones because they are so different they have different reflection reflection so they are useful but of course now there are so many materials also to integrate but it's it's very beautiful when the scholar the scholars with the school they go all together on the third year or the second year i don't remember they go there and they spend one day with the maestri and they start to discuss and and choose the pieces and see the difference between one on, on the other. So it's a very interesting experience that continue, continues a tradition, a wonderful tradition. Yeah, so I imagine that the rocks variety, the color variety of the rocks is very, is, is rich in that area. I mean, the, the... yeah, it's really rich. Maybe Denise knows something more about it. Denise, about the river stones. Um, yeah, in particular, I think about the, um, I'm thinking about the Tagliamento, Tagliamento River. Tagliamento, exactly. Uh, it has a lot of different colors of, uh, of stones, uh, yellows and reds. It's really beautiful to see that. Uh... Yeah, and there's another question by Debbie Smith. If you if you may if, if you know the answer, what is the source of the marble that's used for uh, these mosaics? Marmo. Yeah, uh, I mean usually they are all imported. I don't know if the, the right word. So no, non abbiamo molti molti marmi nel nostro territorio, alcuni sì, ma sono per lo più importati. Quindi abbiamo per esempio il Nero Cina, il Verde Paraguay. China Black and again, many um, marbles are imported, so we have China Black and, and uh, which color from Paraguay? Green. Green from Paraguay, so yeah, there are imported marbles that yeah. Been. Blue from Brazil. Brazil is very important for the blue, blue stone, blue marbles. Thank you, thank you, Guglielmo. And Denise, we, uh, I also wanted to ask you, people is asking me in the chat, um, what happens when you put all, as we won't have the time, unfortunately, to see all the mosaics complete here of Kate Herring uh, mosaic. Uh, it takes a lot of time, I know. <laughs> it takes a lot of time, even a small mosaic, like the, the one she's, uh, she's building today. So imagine how long would it take to complete a portrait? Uh, but um, my question is, uh, when this mosaic is over and you've put all your tessere in the cement glue, 
what happens do you need uh, um do you need to to put some transparent glue or something to protect it like a gloss or no something? no not, nothing no. because uh, yes this material is uh, is glass so also outside is fine um the glue also it says like i said a cement glue so it's perfectly fine outside and sometimes uh, you can uh, use grat, grat, I think it means it's the right the right word, and just to um, cover the space between the the tiles, but uh, not in this case, not with this kind of technique. I mean, could you repeat the name of the material you use to fill the space between? Uh, just grat. Um, in Italiano, I can't. I can't. I didn't grab it. Sorry, it should be a technical word. In Italiano, come si dice? Eh, è semplicemente del cemento, una malta un po' più fine. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Si può usare anche del fugante, come si usa per le pastelle. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you can use mortar. Yeah, they are in the pile of box there every single day. Uh, another question. How did they make the glue for ancient mosaics? This is a very interesting question. Do you know, Guglielmo, the, which kind of glue or, or mortar or whatever was used for ancient mosaics? And did they have a protective covering after they were made in the past? They use lime lately, lime in ancient times. Lime? What does it what it means? What do uh, you I don't know if in Italian. L'ho pronunciato bene, ma si scrive L E M E. It's called also lime process. Sorry, is someone is, is someone uh, unmuted? Please, could you? Uh... Yes. Denise, you are muted. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> OK, okay don't else? worry. Don't worry. But we are having some technical issues. There's people talking in the background, but I can't, uh, I can't understand who is not muted because everyone looks muted to me. So I'm sorry for, I'm sorry if someone heard something uh phone calls or something else uh now it should be everything should be okay but again so uh how did they make the glue for ancient mosaics and did they have a protective covering after they were made so you said that they use lime uh for uh for uh the that should be uh we we don't know the exactly what slime is if you know it in italian maybe we could um uh, I could find a translation for our American public. Um, if it's a Malta or a mortar, Malta, maybe. They use la calce. La calce, okay. So uh, they use, yes, lime. It's lime. <laughs> You're right. I didn't, I couldn't find any translation. So they use lime, but not a covering, right? Like today, they, want, they, they, they didn't use any covering. No, 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 any. They just uh, let it dry over. Could you imagine that after 2000 years, these mosaics are already there, are, are there without any damage or, uh, or uh, small damages and they resisted all this time without any coverings? Could you imagine what a technique they had? And we hope your mosaics also will uh, live up to the last year <laughs> until uh, 4000 uh, after Christ. <laughs> So um, we are 
almost at the end of our uh, of our workshop. Denise, if you want to add something before we close uh, uh, this tiny workshop, just to let people understand more about this amazing technique, feel free. Uh, and if someone of you has a last questions for Denise, please uh, pose your questions. So, uh, in the where in the Bay Area can you buy glass mosaic? Well, I think uh, I would. Uh, I don't know if Denise uh, can answer. I this. don't really know. He's coming directly from Italy for this uh, exhibition, so it's not the person in uh, the right person to ask. But uh, I promise you, I will uh, ask people and inform myself to give you this answer uh, and. Uh, somehow if you want to leave my email your email uh, here uh, so do you ever create your own original design uh, denise um, sometimes yes if uh, it asks i can uh, uh, work on a sketch and then uh, do the mosaic on it do you have favorite subjects oh uh, not really um, maybe uh, sometimes I like to do still lives. Okay, still life. So fruit baskets, uh, moths. Uh, yeah, fruits, um, flowers. Yeah. Um, there's a last question I would say, um, but I, I don't, I'm not sure I understood. It says in case the marble and stones used, used have different thickness, quindi se hanno spessori diversi, i marmi e le, le pietre, um, do you glue the stones to generate a smooth surface? For example, draw the design and glue the stones on opposite side. I'm not sure I really understood exactly what they mean. No, okay. You, if you need, um, yeah, a smooth uh, surface, you have to cut the materials at the right uh, height. I mean. Ah, okay. So you have to file that, to also to file maybe the glass a little bit, no? Um, smooth it to smooth it on a I mean on a grinder or whatever to I can create different um hate. Okay. But uh, I mean it depends on what we what we I have to do. Okay. What the music requires if it is for public spaces. Uh, it can be dangerous. Yeah, of course, it can be. It, it can be. It can have corners that may uh, hurt yeah. people or something. No, yes. So it has to be very smooth. So, Denise, I thank you very, very much for this uh, for this uh, workshop, small workshop. You're also uh, having workshops in Marine Mocha, right? Live workshops, but I think they're sold out already, right? Yeah, I have one on Saturday, but I think it's already sold out. So after the pandemic next year, you can probably come back to San Francisco and uh, we could host uh, a bigger uh, event with you. And uh, maybe you could teach people uh, live this time uh, how to make a mosaic uh, all wonderful. day long, <laughs> all day long. So you will be exploited for all day to, to build these mosaics. But before going, uh, I have to introduce you a very important person for this exhibition. Um, so thank you very much, Denise, once again. Thank, thank you, you for inviting me. Thank you, Bianca. Uh, before starting, before closing, uh, um, I would like to introduce you one of the protagonists of the Italian culture in the Bay Area, Cavaliere Lido Cantarutti. And I can thank Lido enough for his amazing energy uh, and the passion in promoting Italian culture in the US 45 years now. In particular, he's the father of the Italian Film Festival of Marina and has given life to a tradition that every year attracts many Italian cinema lovers to theaters. 
And Lido is also a tireless promoter of Friuli region in US. And so we have to thank him for allowing this exhibition and the festival. And uh, I would like to screen, before giving him a final word, I'd like to screen a, a very short video, one minute video on a Marine Film Festival and this amazing exhibition. So just give me a moment and... So Lido, yes. Thank you again, please. But it's my pleasure. I mean, I want to say that it has been a distinct pleasure to collaborate with the presentation of this extraordinary mosaic exhibit at Marin Mocha. We have done it for the 2019 show and for the current one with a our promotion with them to help promote the festival. And they've gotten a very enthusiastic and successful attendance both times. It's a natural combination. It's a natural partnership. And we've been pleased to work with Guglielmo and, of course, with Denise and the school. And I think it's in a natural collaboration with these are the arts. We've got the cinema arts and we've got the mosaic arts. It's all part of the Italian cultural scene. I do have to say that Saturday, we present the cinema arts. Yes, we do. We're opening up our big show in a beautiful new venue, Angelico Hall on the fabulous campus of Dominican University here in San Rafael in a new, in a new uh, theater, more comfortable seating, bigger screen, better picture, better sound, beautiful movies that we have, we invite you all to come and see, and we'll be again promoting the Mosaic Art Exhibit there. It's a pleasure to do so, and I'm happy to support this in every way that I possibly can. Thanks for letting me be part of this. What you're doing and what we're doing together is a major contribution of, of presenting Italian culture to the Bay Area, and I'm grateful to be a part of it. Thank you so much, Lido. Kudos. Thank you so much, Lido. And I hope everyone can join us and Lido uh, for Marine Film Festival and to mock exhibition uh, uh, on mosaics to, to see live all these amazing works of these uh, artists. And um, so uh, before uh, going, please allow me to also to thank our Consulate General in San Francisco that always supports our cultural programs and patronizes the Italian Marine Film Festival. The Italian Cultural Institute organizes many events free of charge with some of the best Italian cultural protagonists, activities for kids, uh, uh, language courses, movie screens online, book club, cooking classes, uh, Italian newsstand and library uh, online. If you want to always keep up to date, please follow our website, uh, www.iicsanfrancisco.esteri.it or subscribe to our newsletter or follow us on our social networks. Meanwhile, I really hope this webinar may offer you a short pause from uh, worries and anxiety of these times. Please stay <laughs> safe, enjoy the rest of the day and thank you very much for your attention. Thanks everyone. Bye. Mandy, Mandy, Lido, please visit Friuli Venezia <laughs> Giulia next year. That's an amazing region. We are doing everything to promote Friuli Venezia Giulia and its treasures, artists, mosaics, movies. Yes, you are. We appreciate it. 
And I love to hear Mandi Mandi as a salutation. Thank you. Mandi Mandi is the Friuli Venezia Giulia dialect uh, words for uh, goodbye or hello, goodbye, right? So That's right. I studied, I studied Lido. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day. Enjoy this webinar. Ciao. Mandi. Mandi.